I'm not afraid to leave my past behind No, I won't be shaken No, I won't be shaken My fear doesn't stand a chance When I stay, I need your love My fear doesn't stand a chance When I stay, I need your love My fear doesn't stand a chance When I stay, I need your love Oh, 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 oh. there's power, there's power on the rock. Hallelujah, Jesus. Continue to worship the Lord this morning. Continue to worship Him. Lord, your Holy Spirit is welcome here this morning. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Lord. When the music all is stripped away and I simply come longing just to bring something that's worth that will bless your heart oh, I'll bring you more than a for a song in itself is not what you have required. You search much deeper within through the way things appear. You're looking into my heart. I'm coming back to the heart of worship, and it's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I made it, and it's all about you. It's all. Song in itself is not what you have. Re- 
Dying breath has brought me life. 
at uh, Home Depot the other day and getting a load of stuff for one of the projects we're working on and, and I, I'm noticing something with every flip of the calendar that I'm not near as strong as I used to be and that I think that I still am. You know, back when I was 18, 19, and 20, I could, you know, move the whole world. And just <clears throat> so I'd got the stuff, and there was a bunch of bulky items, a lot of four by eight sheets of this and that and the other. And, and I got to the, the parking lot, and I positioned the cart to where I thought it would be the most advantageous for me to load the stuff from the cart onto the truck. And as I'm clearly struggling with the stuff, there's a, there's a guy, just another shopper, who had just parked his car and he was on his way in, and he said, can I help you? Guys, you know what we said, right? No, I got it. I'm good, I'm good, no, I got it. And here's what, here's what, Besides the fact that I truly needed help, here's what irritated the snot out of me. He stood there and watched. <laughs> because he saw the next piece was gonna need, and he stood there and he saw me struggling with the second piece and waited for me to say, can you help me? And he was gracious, and we laughed about it, and we loaded everything up, and everything's fine. Do you understand that 
Jesus Christ is in our midst right now. And he's watching you struggle with the load you're carrying. And he offers his help. The Bible says, cast, cast all your cares on him. Because he cares for you. And because of our pride, we, we sit there and we go, no, 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 I, I got it. I can do this. And he waits for us to say, I need help. If you're here today and you're ready to say, I need help with something, I don't care what it is, it doesn't matter what it is. That's between you and God. If you're here today and you're ready to say, help me, would you just raise your hand right where you are? I was going to have people then lay hands on you, but apparently we need to lay hands on ourselves because everybody's got their hands up. So while your hands are up, why don't you just lean over and touch your neighbor's shoulder, okay? We're going to pray for each other here. We're not going to hold hands. We're not going to greet each other with a wet, sloppy kiss or anything like that, okay? This is... Father, in Jesus' name, we are your dear children who need some help. And you are there offering your help and we're ready to say help us and Lord whatever the cause is whatever the issue is whether it's emotional or mental or or physical or financial whatever it is that the area we're needing help today collectively we we cast our cares on you and we say Lord forgive us for trying to carry a burden that you were, we were never meant to carry. Forgive us for being weighted down and not trusting you with your word that says, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So we turn to you, our, our, our big brother, the one who has pay, paid the way for us to be adopted into the family, who on the cross bore our sins and it is finished the free gift of eternal life it is it is finished and we just need to receive it the help that we need in our time of need grace mercy we come boldly to the throne of grace and praying not only for ourselves but we're praying for our friend to our and our family to the left and to the right of us and we say lord help us today Help us. We cast these burdens. We cast these cares on you. We may not understand where the answer is going to be, and we may not feel immediate relief, but <clears throat> we're, we're, we're acknowledging that we need help. So wherever you're watching, whether it's in here in person or online or out in the courtyard, just know this, that our Heavenly Father, your Heavenly Father, He's just not your God. He is your, he is your Father who loves you with an everlasting love. Who cares about you and, and, and me more than we care about ourselves. He's there walking with you every step of the way. And he's here to remind you today that he's here to give you his help. Trust him. Trust him with whatever you're going through. Trust him. Don't worry about tomorrow. Just trust him to get you through today. And when you wake up tomorrow, you're going to trust him to get through tomorrow. And you're going to take it day by day by day. And we pray these things with an expectation that our Heavenly Father, who loves us beyond words and the ability to describe it, pray these things knowing that you are there to help us in Jesus mighty precious name and everyone said amen amen, amen. give the Lord a hand clap this morning as you're seated turn and wave to someone let them know that you're glad that they're here <clears throat> and if you waved at somebody that you don't know before after service is over just say hello and introduce yourself to them. We're glad that you're here. Uh, 
Oh. Good to have you today. Good to have you today. If you're visiting with us by chance, uh, there's a little connect card in the chair pocket in front of you. Um, if you're interested in filling out that card, we'd love to have a registration of your visit. We will uh, get back with you. If you have a prayer request or a, prayer, a praise report, that's a great way to uh, uh, get in touch with us as well. Uh, we're going to be soon, uh, in the next couple of weeks, we're going to join the 21st century. And uh, we're going to offer a texting option for uh, your ability to, uh, ways to communicate to us. Uh, we were in a meeting <laughs> and uh, Vache mentioned, you know, you know, we can text with our phones now. And it just, my mind, <laughs> what? You know, I was just so stuck on this little card thing. So um, you can take the card and put it in a museum of what used to be. And so uh, we'll still have the card if you're interested in having the card. But uh, stay tuned for that texting option to uh, let us know your prayer requests and praise reports. And uh, we're glad that you're here today. A couple of things we want to draw your attention by way of announcement. Uh, all the things that we have going on throughout the week, opportunities for you to grow, connect, and serve. Those are our three core values around here. We believe that everything, one thing rolls into the next. The more you connect, the more you grow, the more you serve, the more you serve, the more you connect, grow, and serve, connect, grow, serve. That's We're on this journey together, and everything that we do is, is designed to be either connect item or a grow item or a serve item. And so um, you can take a look and, and uh, check out all the things that are there. Uh, for us, for you to, to get involved with. Also, coming up on the 7th is our uh, comedy night, and it's an evangelistic outreach, actually. We've got two clean Christian brothers who are uh, make a living at this. These are not, these are not uh, open mic hacks that, you know, try to, you know, these are, these are pros. Um, the one, uh, Scott Wood, he uh, writes for other comedians. He's written for Jay Leno and some other people, and they've worked with uh, other big name comedians, and they've got their, they've, both of them have had their own dry bar comedy specials, and and so these are these are legit guys, and so uh, uh, bring a friend uh, on the way out at the l counter in the lobby. There'll be an opportunity for you to uh, uh, purchase tickets. They're virtual, I mean, they're uh, they're digital. So when you purchase them, we will shoot you an email uh, uh, this afternoon or tomorrow, and you can hit print. If you uh, somebody said, "Hey, I want to buy more than than one for myself. I want to be able to pass them out." Great opportunity to invite a friend. Uh, if first come, first serve. I think we're set aside 150 or 60, something like that. So the first 160 that uh, buy tickets. Um, we want to get in here, but we don't want to get so crowded that it's uncomfortable. But uh, it's going to be a great night. That is the 7th of August. It's a Saturday night. And uh, we'll have food trucks out here in, in the parking lot. So you can come, grab some grub, and then come on in here and, and uh, laugh till your stomach hurts after it hurts from filling up on the grub. So uh, good stuff. So we're going to um, look forward to that. It, um, and then the headliner, uh, Dennis Gaxiola, will uh, tell us give us his testimony and kind of lead us into a cliffhanger and then say, hey, if you want to hear more, come back tomorrow morning and hear, hear the rest. And so, uh, again, it's an evangelistic opportunity to invite your unsafe friends and have a night of good, 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 clean fun. And you not have to worry about anything vulgar or off color. It's, it's good, good, good stuff. So um, I will be hosting. That's the only part of it that you will have to worry about. And so... Uh, the other two guys are, are great. So anyway, we're going to receive our morning tithes and offerings before we dismiss our kids. And, and if you are visiting with us, listen, this is for home, homegrown folks. This is for uh, the people who call this their home. If you're visiting with us today, we're not expecting anything from you. However, if you just hit the lottery and you're looking for a place to, you know, we've got a lot of projects with our other campuses and, that we need to get uh, accomplished to get these campuses up and running. But other than that, you can throw your card in there as the offering bucket goes by. Father, in Jesus' name, thank you so much for the opportunity we have to serve you and worship you in this capacity. And we thank you, Lord, for the ability to earn a living. We thank you for jobs to go to. We thank you, Lord, for taking care of us in every, every aspect. And so we pray that you bless the gift and the giver alike as we worship you in this way. In Jesus' name, and everyone said Amen. Kids, come on forward. We're going to pray for you as the offering buckets are passed out. And uh, we have kids and then we have youth that uh, have a sidebar uh, class that uh, they can uh, be a part of and there's some great discussion groups. Do you have one? You have a, you do? Okay. Hold. What is it? Okay. Hold on a minute. Let me turn the mic.
there, my friend. So, all right, let's pray for our kids. Father, in Jesus' name, thank you for the opportunity to, um, to teach these young kids. We thank you, Lord, that we can laugh and, and uh, enjoy watching them grow up. And we pray that you'd help us to raise them up in the fear and admonition of the Lord, as the scripture says. Bless them as they go to their class, we pray in Jesus' name. And everyone said, Amen. give them a hand as they go. Loved my days. <clears throat> it's been about 12 years as a kid's pastor, and those days were some of the best days. I learned more about you parents <laughs> during the prayer time. It was amazing. It was really was. It was an opportunity. It was great, though. I mean, you, kids, you could tell what, what was burdening the kids, and, and it was an opportunity then to, to reach out and minister to the whole family. But uh, uh, kids are special, man. They're under way more attack than we we realize uh, uh, spiritually and emotionally and mentally and all kinds of stuff. So get them here. Well, we are uh, continuing in in our, our series called Suit Up. And uh, we're working with our uh, kids' ministry in a series that we're, we're doing together in, in parallel with them. And uh, <clears throat> if this is your first Sunday with us, welcome. And just to give you kind of a, a recap, we... We learned that uh, we all face battles of every kind. There's battles every day that we fight, temptations and things that uh, we go through. And, and that uh, in order to stay on the, the straight and narrow, uh, we, we need the armor of God to uh, be able to fight against the, the attacks of the enemy. The enemy, if he's lost us for, for eternity, he, he hates us. And uh, he has come to kill, steal, and destroy. And even if he has not... Uh, again, if, he's, if your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life and he doesn't have you uh, that way, he will come and try to rob you, steal your joy, is, you know, just trip you up and, and um, just wants to make life miserable for you. But on the flip side, Jesus said, I've come to give you life and that life, what, more abundant. abundant. So there is, there is a way to live that, that Jesus said that we can have abundant life. In order to do that, we have to have the armor of God. And we then, then uh, looked at the belt of truth, and we said the truth is, holds everything together and that we can hang and, and anchor things to the truth. When we know the truth, know the truth, uh, truth known truth will set us free. Uh, and if known truth will set us free, known truth will keep us free free. It will keep us from falling into lies and bondages and, and such. Then last week we looked at the breastplate of righteousness and that the breastplate, the significance of the breastplate is to protect the vital organs. It keeps you alive. There was a breastplate and then we're going to go on to talk about the shield of faith and another uh, subsequent teaching, but the breastplate keeps the vital organs and keeps you alive. And Jesus said that uh, if you hunger and thirst for righteousness, and we said that righteousness is simply just doing the right thing in every scenario where there is a choice to make. There is a right choice and there is a wrong choice. And if we hunger and thirst after righteousness, uh, that we will be filled. And they're, 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 when we fill ourselves with the good stuff, we don't get hungry for the bad stuff. And so uh, inside of us, there is a, a, a hole that... You know, we are uh, literally in our culture, we are over, we are overfed and undernourished. And that nourishment that Jesus talks about that if we hunger after is, is righteousness, doing the right thing. It, it, it feels good to do right. It really does. And sometimes, you know, we want to do something right and then we want to toot our own horn and, you know, post it on whatever and social media and say, look what I did. And Jesus is going, oh, you just lost your blessing, you know. <laughs> Keep it, keep it quiet. If you really want to feel good, do something good and don't tell anybody about it. That's, that's, that's when you're going to a whole nother level of living. But our anchor verse, our anchor verse is found in Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10, 11, and 12. It says, finally be strong in the Lord and his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. Those are plans to understand that that, that he has a plan 
for you. Just the way things, same way the devil, the, that Jesus, the Bible says about God, that uh, I know the plans I have for you, right? So in the same way that God is have, has plans for you, plans to prosper and to give you a future, that the devil has got a scheme for you. And, and his plan for you is different than his plan for me. And we are to know and be able to recognize what the devil's plans are in order for us to overcome them. But it takes the armor of God. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers and against the authorities, against, we need to fix that, <laughs> the te- powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. And we said, and when we started this series, that, that our battle is, is spiritual, but it manifests in the physical. It, the, the, we, we're not, when we're engaged in um, warfare with one another, that's not where the real battle is. The issue is never really the issue. I tell people when I, I counsel them that when they're at odds with one another, uh, the, the issue that you're fighting about is, is not the issue. All right. Jennifer if, Jennifer, if you were to pull Jennifer aside and say, what, what really... What really is the, what really drives you nuts about being married to Kevin? She would say, I'm just going to tell you right now, she would say nothing. Because he's the most perfect man who ever lived (laughs) next to Jesus. No, she wouldn't say that at all. What she would say, her, one of her biggest pet peeves is that I leave my shoes where she trips them. And she, she will. And for 32 years, I have, she has told me, quit putting your shoes there. And I have told her, quit walking there. <laughs> 32 years, quit putting your shoes there there and I tell her quit walking there and and most times we're we just kind of banter back and forth over it and would you know it's she, she pretends to be upset and it's really kind of a fun thing that you know it's, it's an amazing thing but the core issue is not the shoes the core issue is on her side it's, it's the fact that I lack of respect for what she wants. The shoes are not the issue. The issue is that she perceives it, or as it comes across to her, is, you know, I've asked you, all right, and there are, on the rare occasion when I'm taking them off at the end of the day, and I'm, you know, I'll put them over there. Once in a while. <laughs> Once in a while. All right. Okay, so I mean, again, so so that's whole, that's all that to illustrate that that our battle is against other things other than how it's manifesting. So you got to peel back the layer of the onions, and 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 James writes, "What causes fights and quarrels among you? It's not the desire that you have within you. You want something and you don't get it." I don't know why I, I just feel compelled to just touch on this for a little bit. If you're here today and you're fighting and arguing with somebody, maybe at work or maybe it's in your own household, a brother or sister. Loved one, a spouse. Listen, the issue, if you, can, if you can be honest about this one thing, who wanted what and isn't getting it? And that, that, if, you can, if you can tap into that reality, you will be able to work through any, any problem. And it takes humility and it takes honesty to be able to say, this is what I'm really, I wanted this, I expected this, but I didn't get it, and now I'm upset. And that happened in 1972, and I've been angry ever since, and you know all of that stuff. So, <clears throat> so uh, today we're looking on the the Bible goes on to say in Ephesians chapter six that we are then to put on the full armor of God, and we put on the belt plate, uh, the uh, belt of truth, and the bre- bre- the breastplate. Be careful, the breastplate of righteousness, and then it says, and with your feet shod. Real kind of fancy word with. Wear shoes of the gospel of peace. All right. So take your Bibles and, and turn with me to uh, Romans chapter 10. Romans chapter 10. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, Romans. 
chapter 10. As you're, as you're turning there, I want you to think of, uh, of this, that the significance. When each week we talk about the significance of each of the pieces of the armor. The significance of the, significance of the right footwear helps you to advance. Look, look, at, look at our, you know, go, go to a department store or go to a specialty shoe shop or go to, your, go to your favorite store for your hobby and you're going to find usually there's certain type of footwear that you would wear that would enhance the experience, right? So if, you, if you're on your feet all day, uh, at work, there's a, there's a type of, 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 you know, shoe with a sole with a certain arch support and all that kind of stuff that, that helps you stand on your feet all day. If you're, if you're rock climbing, you know, there's, there's a certain shoe that you would wear, you know, you, you would not wear four-inch heels rock climbing. Just, <laughs> you just wouldn't. And, and if I was, if I, if I, <laughs> if I was a woman... I think probably the, the main thing that would want to make me transition to become a man, I wouldn't have to wear all of the crazy different t- styles of shoes. All right? I, would, I, could, I could just wear a couple of different styles of shoes and be comfortable. You ladies, the stuff you have to go through just to, you know, I mean, it was, uh, God bless you. God bless you. And uh, just be yourself. Relax. Okay? Just wear something comfortable, all right? It's, it's, you know. Foot, footwear, the right footwear for the for the occasion, helps you get from point A to point B, helps you accomplish the task. Because if, you know, if your feet aren't dry, and, it, and those of you who served in the military, and, you know, if, if you got blisters on your feet, you can't, you can have the greatest armor and, and, and armory, and you could have the best weaponry, but if you can't walk 10 paces to get from this point to that point, all of, the, all of the weapons in the world are useless if you can't get there. When I, when I, when I played basketball, the, the, they wanted us to wear two, two pairs of socks, and one was a cotton sock, and the other one was a wool sock. And the cotton sock, and the coach explained it to me, the cotton sock was there to soak up the, 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 the moisture, and the wool sock was there to help against friction. Because moisture and friction together equal blisters. And if you got blisters on your feet, I don't care what great, how great a shooter you are, if you can't run up and down a court, you're useless. It, and and the, proper, the proper footwear was, was critical in order for us to accomplish the task. All right, so here we go. Romans chapter 10, verses 12 through 15 says this. For there is no difference between Jew and Gentile. The same Lord is Lord of all and richly blesses all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. How then can they call on the one that they have not believed in? And how can they believe in the one of whom they have not heard? And how can they hear without someone preaching to them? And how can they preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. Now, this is a beautiful passage of Scripture because it shows the progression of, of getting from here to there. That Listen, everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. But how do you get to that point of calling on the name of the Lord if you never heard of the name of the Lord? And, and how do you hear about the name of the Lord unless someone goes and tells you about the name of the Lord? And how do, you, how do you go and tell somebody about the name of the Lord if, 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 number one, you don't answer the call, but number two, somebody isn't sent? You know, we have missionaries all over the world. As an Assembly of God church, we partner with people who, who feel the call and they go. And, and, and I, I'm not a missionary type of person. We call them strategic partners now as, as we change the verbiage, but it's still just missionary. But we're strategic partners to emphasize the fact that yeah, they're going to go, but if we don't send them, we partner with them to send our missionaries. That's why your tithe is important to run the, the, the daily operations of, of this place. But you're over and above your tithe, your missions giving 
to support wor the work around the world partners with those people who have answered the call. And so God says go, they answer the call, we say yeah, we'll support you, we send you. So you see this progression that, that somebody sends, somebody goes, then they get told, and then somebody calls on the name of the Lord, and they're saving it. And, he, and the writer of the, of, the, of the book of Romans says, how beautiful, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. Now, Take your Bibles and turn over to Isaiah chapter 52 because when, a, when a, there's a passage in the New Testament that is quoting a passage in the Old Testament, I always think it's fun to go back and look at the context in which that verse is pulled from. Isaiah chapter 52, verse 7 is where, this, where the, the quotation of how beautiful are the feet of those who bring Good news. It actually goes into a little more detail. Isaiah chapter 52, verse 7 says this How beautiful on the mountains are the feet of those who bring good news, who proclaim peace, who bring good tidings, who proclaim salvation, who say to Zion, Your God reigns. Now, again, we have a tendency in our Western mindset and our current culture in which we live, how we do things, we lose a lot uh, in the translation. We lose a lot in the share, because we don't have sh the shared experience that an Old Testament person who believed in God and a, even a, a first century uh, New Testament believer had. Can, can you imagine if the early church had the communication system and the, the cars and the advancement that we have today? What they did just with the simple power of the Holy Spirit it changed the world. We have, the, we have all of those things plus all of the technological advances that we have and we still go, eh, whatever. Because we have yet to be ignited by the Spirit of God. And we have yet to have the Holy Spirit fire us up the way that, that He intends us, us to be fired up. We could do so much more if we, allow, if we fully were yielded to the Holy Spirit. But here in the Old Testament, in Isaiah chapter 52, said, He says, how beautiful are the, on the mountains are the feet of those who bring good news. Now, I just talked about the appropriate footwear for the occasion. You realize they didn't have Foot Locker back then. <laughs> they didn't have a, they didn't even have a, a a shoe outlet source, you know, for like you know, factory seconds or little blemishes or something like that. Mm -mm. The best they could do would be some type of piece of leather tied um, to their feet to somehow keep the rocks from cutting their feet as they climbed the mountain. That's why when you entered into a house that you had the servant, the servant of the house. That job was to wash the guest's feet. Because everything that was, that was out there gets brought in here. And in order to I mean, a lot of people have kind of traditions at, at their home where it's like, it's just like a, a basket when you first walk in. It's like, hey, we, we, if you don't mind, we, when we kick our shoes off and, and you put them there and, and you, you enjoy inside the house with, with socks. And that's why, you know, it's always best to know whose house you're going to. That way you put on nice socks. <laughs> you don't want this little piggy slipping out of the hole there, you know, when... It was, the, it was one of the lowliest tasks because you're washing off everything, everything that accumulated while you're walking outside. Dust, sweat, grime, dirt, whatever they stepped in had to be washed off before you came into the house. And that was, that's why it was such a big deal when Jesus, while they were arguing about the greatest in the kingdom, Jesus didn't say, hey, 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 keep it down over there. He just got up and did the lowliest task. Here is the person who, 
by whom and through whom everything that we see was created. And the Bible says that by him everything is held together. And the disciples, mere mortals, are arguing who is better than the next. He is washing their feet. And he says, go and do the same. And we, we miss it when we say, what we need is a good foot washing service. No, we don't. What we need is humility. And we need people who will fight for the lowliest job there is. That's what we need. That's what Jesus was demonstrating. It was the, think of the lowliest task, the simple thing, oh my God, that is, I, that, that is beneath me. Okay. The Christian walk, the Christian life is nothing is beneath you. There was nothing that is, that is too low of a task, too dirty of a job, that you would say, I, I don't do that. Because you don't want to get to the pearly gates and be greeted with that same attitude. Uh, we don't take your kind here. So Isaiah... Again, understand in context, we spend $2.7 billion in this country alone. China is, clo is a close second at $2.3 billion on, ma on manicures and pedicures. To make your fingers and your toes look good. I'm not, trust me, I am not saying that is a bad thing. I'm just, I'm just comparing our culture to what they had to deal with. Right? We, scrub, we file and we, and we and paint and it match. Okay? <laughs> now listen to me. I, 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 I understand that there are some weird attractions to some weird stuff. You know, <clears throat> people, and you may be one of them. I'm not criticizing you. I'm just telling you where, my, where I'm at, okay? Can, can, we, can we talk? Can we just, it's just us. There's some people with foot fetishes, man, that, 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 that dig the human foot. I love my wife. And I'm telling you, it, listen, I'll look at and touch anything from the ankle up, okay? I, I, but when she wants to get back at me for putting my, her, my shoes in her way, when we crawl into bed, she'll put her feet on my legs. It's like, get, put some socks, get those things off of me. I just, I don't even like my own feet, okay? I just, I mean, what is it? Maybe 2% of the entire world's population have all the toes in the right, you know? I mean, listen, I, I, I'm going to tell you, something. please don't do this. Please do not do what I did, okay? I Googled ugly feet <laughs> and then clicked on images. Oh. There are certain things you just can't unsee. I'm telling you, it is <laughs> toes are pointing in all kinds of directions. I mean, it's just like, and these poor people who do the pedicures, it's like, <sighs> no wonder they're wearing a mask. It's to catch the vomit that happens when they're. And we have clean feet compared to when Isaiah writes, How beautiful on the mountains are the feet of him who brings good news. Putting something in juxtaposition, something hideous, and saying, how beautiful even they are when you bring good news. Have you ever 
You ever gotten a phone call from a work associate or something? And especially if you're in a position of authority or supervisor role, and and it's it's like, oh, (sighs) yes. Problem, 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 problem. Yes. Problem, 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 problem. Yes, and then it's good news, right? The other day, a phone rings, and, and somebody from the staff is calling me, and, it, and it's, it's Fache, and, <laughs> well, I only say that because, I mean, he's, he, you know, he's, He's the guy that reports to me all kind of all the stuff that's happening. Is it's what frees me up in order to do the things we're doing. Anyway, so it's his job. And and, and the first thing, so hello. And he goes, hey, wait, 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 before I, I have no bad news. <laughs> oh, okay. He said. He said, just got a, I just got the price back from the quote for the the, the air conditioning from this the the third or fourth person that. And it's the, the best, it's the best price ever. It's, the, it's such a good deal, we're going to be able to air condition the entire state of California. It's just, I mean, just, <laughs> we're going to put us back in a deep freeze. It's, just, it's beautiful. And, and I wanted to say, knowing that, you know, this happened like two days ago, and knowing that this is the topic du jour for Sunday, I wanted to tell him, ah, oh, you have beautiful feet. Beautiful feet. You see, the scripture says that that our job, our job is to bring good news. Sometimes we fail in that department. We're good at pointing out truth and pointing out sin and pointing out wrongdoing and pointing out injustice and all but but the spirit in which we bring things we're, it's one thing to point you ever, you ever have somebody you ever have somebody that all they do is point out a problem they never bring you a solution right and and, and it's one of the things I, I tell the staff anybody comes listen I can handle problems, but think of a solution, okay? I can't be the only thinker of problem solving. Your your job is not to just tell me what the problems are. Your job is to alleviate me having to fix all the problems. Because if I have to fix all of your problems, I don't need you, okay? Inform me of the issue, but then back that up with here's how I handled it. All right, way to go. That a boy. You get you, you know, three more days. You can stick around three more days. <laughs> the Bible says, How beautiful are the feet of those on the, on the mountains? How beautiful on the mountain are the feet of those who bring good news, who proclaim peace, who bring good tidings, who proclaim salvation, who, who say to Zion, Your God reigns. That, that phrase, Again, this is, this is a Jewish prophet speaking to the Jewish people, talking about a word of encouragement to remind you that, listen, there's somebody that, can, that is in charge that can handle your problem. You see, we, the church needs to get out of the condemnation business. We need to get in the business of, let me tell you, here's the good news. The good news is there's somebody who can help you in your time of need. And let me introduce that person to you. His name is Jesus. And let me witness to you about what Jesus has done in my life. I'm not going to preach to you about what he can do in your life. That's that's between you and him. I'm just going to tell you what he's done in my life. And that's all a witness does. I was blind, but now I see. I was hurt and broken and now I'm whole again. Whatever your testimony is, understand that a testimony doesn't become one until you first have a test. 
And then God comes in and rescues you. And you can say, let me tell you how my God reigned in my scenario. Almost every one of you, almost 100% of you raised your hand and said, hey, I, have a, I need help today. I, I can't wait for when that help situation, that, that situation where you need help gets resolved. And you can say, let me tell you, let me tell you how my God reigned. And then what happens is, when you come across other people who are dealing with that same issue, let me, let me tell you, I got good news for you. Let me tell you what I did. I cast my cares on him because he cares for me. And this is what he did for me. And if you'll do the same, he'll do it for you. I got good news for you in your time of hurt, in your time of pain. Listen, I know you're warring and, and you're fighting. And listen, I, I want to bring you peace. Jesus said blessed. And the word blessed means happy. Happy are the peacemakers. Don't get involved in the drama. Figure out how you can bring peace in a scenario. How you can de-escalate something. How you can bring the wisdom of God into a scenario where, wow, I was ready to kill that guy and you calm me down. I got good news for you. If you'll give your life over to Jesus, he can calm you down the same way he'll give you that same wisdom he's given me. The great, the great commission. You may know what the great commission is. What is it? Go into all the world, preach the gospel, make disciples. That's what it says. The word go, it, it, it does have a, 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 a lesser, I don't want to say this in English like I, like I know the Greek, but in English, the pa- passive, there's a passive and an aggressive verb form, all right? I know that makes me sound more educated than I really am, but I... <clears throat> The, the passive form is as you go. It's like as you go, make disciples. Don't just be about your own business, but as you go about your business and your daily life, the Great Commission is make disciples. Excuse me, the, the more emphatic, aggressive, if I can use that word, form of what the Greek word for go is. And I... I wrote it down here. It, <clears throat> it means, it doesn't mean just go. It means go! Move out! Or as they say in Texas, get on up out of here! My dad would say when us three boys would be standing around on Saturdays when we were supposed to be doing some chores, he'd say, you know, in the military, we'd throw a hand grenade in the middle of you. (laughs) That'll make you scatter. And you know what what God did? God allowed persecution in in the first church because they didn't necessarily understand. Get up on out of here. Go. They go, okay, cool, hunker, hunker down, hunker down, let's switch this thing. And he allowed persecution, which scattered the church, and it made them go. You understand that if you're not following what God wants you to do, he'll, he'll throw a hand grenade in the middle of your life to kind of get, get your attention. It's, it's emphatic. It's, it, the gospel of peace is for marching Okay, the armor of God as a whole, the Bible talks about, uh, you know, so we can, after everything, we're able to what? Stand. All right? But there is an element to being part of God's army that is we're marching and we're getting from this point to that point. And we've got to go. And the way we have to go is that what, what gets us through the, the footwear that, that, that we need for those types of assignments is peace 
and good news, a proclamation of salvation, helping people find the way out of their predicament, not pointing their predicament out. People know they're in trouble. There is still a a sense of right and wrong in people that's inherent by God. And what has happened is, is that there is a move to make the wrong right in order to assuage the guilt. And so there's this this push to declare what has been known and deep down known as wrong and not right behavior. Well, let's make that behavior right and therefore we feel good about it. It's an internal struggle. What, what, What gets me, what is so interesting, people who are supposed to be just so free, love and care, are the most angry, bitter Hostile. And then what we do in the church is we match their hostility. And that's not what we're supposed to do it. Like we're playing poker and they go, oh yeah, well I hate you. All right, I'll see your hate and I'll raise your hate. And they go, well I'll see your hate and I'll raise you more hostility. And then we turn around and go, boy we're getting persecuted for our faith. No, you're getting persecuted for your stupidity, okay? If we were gentle, understanding the gospel of peace is what we need in a war zone, not things that stoke up more hostility. Listen, our our, our anchor verse says what? That we are, we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, correct? Correct. We, a lot of times we equate that to the, the Christian side of things. We as Christians do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against powers of, of principalities and, and of spiritual forces in high places. Do you understand that is, a, that is a truism both for the saved and unsaved? That when we become saved, now we're roaring against the forces of evil. Right? But when I'm unsaved, the forces of evil leaves me alone. Leaves me alone. But the forces of good, the hounds of heaven as I call them. Anybody ever been with a bunch of hound dogs and a, you know, and a, ar, 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 ar. And, and, and we, we got one treat over here. Ar, ar, ar. The hounds of heaven, I'm going after you. That's the forces of good going after the sinner. And they're fighting against those spiritual forces. It is a war. Ladies and gentlemen, we are at war. And we need to understand that, which leads to our life point. God's boots are made for warring. And that's just what they'll do. If the world's going to hear the gospel, they're going to have to hear it from you. Amen. And if you're here today not understanding why people are laughing and clapping, listen to some music, okay? I mean, <laughs> uh, <coughs> I have here. I bought me some new work shoes. Heck, Jimmy Buffett would, wouldn't even wear these flip flops. I mean, this 98 cents at Walmart. Absolute worthless. I don't know, Ron, you were with us. We were working in Morro Bay, the, the Morro Bay Parsonage of the house, and <clears throat> this person is no longer with LifePoint Church who showed up at the, the crack of noon with coffee. And we're, you know, we got sawdust all over us, and, you know, we're, we're, we're nailing and banging and pounding and, you know, replacing bad wood with good wood and 
This person shows up at the crack of noon with a cup of coffee wearing sandals and has the audacity to want to know if we need help. (laughs) For a moment, for just a moment, I I, I was, yeah. Then I looked down and went, now we're good. We're good. We're, we're working where <laughs> boards fall on your feet, cords trip you up, and you're wearing this? You are so ill-equipped to offer us any help, but I bet you feel good, don't you? Well, I offered, and they said no, because you didn't have the proper footwear. So oftentimes we do that spiritually. Well, I tried, but they didn't want to accept Christ. But you didn't have the actual footwear needed to make advancements to get into the battle. You're ill-equipped. We, we need to unplug from the way the world does things and tap into understanding that our job is to be peacemakers and to bring the love of, of the gospel and the, and the healing power to a hurting world. If we're not offering that, there's nothing that we have then that they, that they would even say, I'll even investigate it. That's the significance of the gospel, the boots, of the, the, with you having our feet shod with the gospel of peace, that the gospel of peace will help us to advance where we're going. It'll get us into those war zones. It'll get us into those places where chaos is, but we're bringing peace. We're peacemakers. We're, we're peace lovers. We're people that, that bring a wisdom and we're bringing a word of encouragement. We're bringing a, 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 a lifeline of salvation. And we're willing to get in with people where they are to show them the way. I'll close with this. I remember several years ago, I went with, on, a, on a youth camping trip on a lake up in Sacramento, and I don't swim. I take a shower so I can stand up. Okay, that's how, I don't even, I don't even get in the bathtub. Okay, it's, I, and I let people talk me into I had a vest on, and it was rated for 300 pounds, which, for the record, barely ample, okay? They said, Kevin, you should get in the inner tube and let us tow you on the lake with the, on the inner tube. No, I'm good. No, come on! Come on, everyone else is doing it. (laughs) All right, but listen to me. Driver, youth pastor, do not go fast. (laughs) I cannot swim. You've got a life vest on. Trust me. So... To his credit, I, I get in the inner tube and I'm, I'm holding on and the rope and they're, hey, Kevin's in there. You know. We're going down the lake. To his credit, not fast at all. I'm going, okay. He's being respectful. I get it. When I'm at, when I'm, I'll give him a big hug and high five. Thank you for listening. But we started to get to the other end of the lake where we're running out of lake. So he has to make a turn to turn around and come back the other way. Well, in the turn, the boat is making a wake in the water, which an inner tube and water making a wake becomes a ramp. (laughs) I was walking on water for just a brief moment. (laughs) 
you don't make the proper entrance into water, it's like concrete. <laughs> you know. So now I'm, I'm dazed and confused and I'm freaked out and now I'm trying to tread water, okay? And I'm trying to keep the water like right here, you know? So I'm trying... <laughs> No, I looked as stupid as it sounds, okay? So, <laughs> they, they, they're screaming, man down, man down, you know? So, the, he turns around, and, and, I'm, try, and, I'm, and I'm losing it. I'm, I'm, I'm starting to fall down and drinking water, taking water, and I'm, you know, and I'm, I, it's, it's over. It's my, you know, I'm thinking, this is it. It's, it's over. It's my, you know... <laughs> They get the boat closed, and the other youth pastor, there was a main guy and this other youth pastor from this other group, and, and throws me a rope that, that lands like that far from where my hand. <laughs> and they're yelling, swim to the rope. I can't swim! This is where this whole thing started with me. I told you, I can't swim. So the youth pastor says to the other youth pastor, you're going to have to go in and get him. You, you, ever, you ever see somebody's facial expression like, I'll do this, but this is the least thing of my, on my want to list? When you're a rescuer gives you this expression. Because <laughs> he's taking his shirt off, okay? And I'm going, hey, I can wash my shirt on his abs. Look at that. I mean, and here I am, 3 hundy in this, you know. You know, trying to keep the water down here. He dives in, he gets the rope, and he grabs my hand, puts it on the rope. I pull in, I flop over into the boat. I said, his name was Chuck. I said, Chuck. <laughs> Thanks for saving my life. <laughs> he said, learn how to swim. And it was, Thanks, Chuck. Here's the point. Chuck was not in the mood to get wet, did not want to dive in the water. But he did what he had to do to help a friend. There's people dying, and they're trying to tread water in life, and, and we've got the answer. You see, in the facial expression that we give people sets the tone for everything. How we enter into the scenario. How, are, we, are we bringing peace and salvation or are we bringing more chaos and condemnation? Father, in Jesus' name, we come to you this wonderful day with the truth that we need to all hear that we need the, our feet protected and with the gospel of peace. Because any other form of footwear is not going to help us get from point A to point B and make advancements for the kingdom. And so, Lord, I pray for each and every one here today that if we've got some heart issues that we've, we've got to look at and change about the way we interact with people, Help us today. Just, Holy Spirit, you, you, are, you are bringing wonderful, loving conviction, which is different than condemnation. You're, you're, you're tapping on some hearts right now saying, hey, maybe there's some things that you need to work on as you deal with people. Because we could be better at advancing the kingdom and introducing people
to the Savior. If that's you today, I, I just pray right now that you would just simply say, Lord, forgive me. I've allowed, I've allowed the dust and the grime and the, and the filth that this world is, in, is, is mired in, I've allowed it to affect me. Help me to, to show people the same kindness and love and peace that was shown to me when I came to know Jesus Christ. And maybe that's part of the problem is that you came to Christ out of a sense of condemnation and a sense of fear and you've never really experienced peace with God. You, you, you appreciate his salvation, you appreciate his sacrifice on the cross, all, all of the things, all the, those are all true, but you've, you've, never, you've never experienced just that wonderful love, unconditional love. You've never experienced the, and, 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 walked in the concept of God and I are okay and I don't have to perform for God for him to love me. Because that's what you've grown up on. You've grown up on performance. You've had to earn people's love. You've had to earn, earn the right to be with someone. You, you, you've lived under this the spiritual dome that's a, that is a lie and you've transferred it over to God and it, you, you, you're missing out on so much. And God wants to heal you today. He wants to break that bond, the chain. He wants to break that, that bondage of a lie that you have to perform for God for him to accept you. The truth is we do things for God. We serve him because he has unconditionally loved us not to earn it. Let that go right now. Let it go. Let the lie go. Hold on to the truth and experience unconditional love and peace. And maybe you're here today that you've never given your heart to God. You've never you've never you're not at peace with God, and you, you, you need to make your life right with Him. With every head bowed and every eye closed, I want to just want to give you an opportunity. I'm just going to ask you to raise your hand. I'm going to pray with you. If that's you, raise your hand and put it right back down. Thank you. Anybody else? Anybody else? Thank you. Would you all stand to your feet, please? Peace with God is simply receiving what he's given you. He's served up a meal of, the Bible says he, he serves me a meal in the presence of my enemies, sets a table in the presence of my enemies that I can enjoy, I can feast on. You're surrounded by hostility, but God wants to just, he wants to provide for you a, this sanctuary of peace. I'm going, to, I'm going to say a prayer. There's nothing magical about this prayer, but I just want you to repeat this. so you can, I want everybody to repeat it so that you'll, you'll, you'll hear yourself saying these things. And, and maybe if you ever drift away from the reality of God's love and peace, it'll, it'll bring you back. Dear Father, I accept your love and grace for me. I accept your peace. And because of what you did, I can be right with you. And I receive your free gift of salvation. And I don't have to do anything to, for, for it. But because I have it, I now want to serve you the rest of my life in response to your peace. 
in Jesus' name. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May he cause his face to shine upon you. May he turn his countenance to you and give you his peace. And what you have received from him, may you go and walk in that truth and walk in that peace. And that peace will take you to places where you can present the gospel, present the Savior, present the salvation message, present the answer to people's problems so they can have the same peace that you have just received. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we pray. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. God bless you. Have a wonderful week. We'll see you this week, uh, Wednesday.